up until this point, things in Wisconsin had just not been going the way that we wanted. Mark had an encounter with this big buck and wasn't able to seal the deal. And then shortly after that, Danny had an encounter as well with this big buck and again, wasn't able to seal the deal. Luckily though, we were able to put a little bit of meat in the freezer another way. Well, would you look at that? We got a pheasant without even shooting it. Oh shit, it's still alive! <laughs> Hold on, let me get video. <laughs> Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. So the story is, we drove by, we drove we by and out. we noticed that it was still alive. Somebody had just hit it. Man, look at the colors on those things. Look at the feathers on that thing. These things are beautiful, man. And even though our hunting skills had failed us, Danny's dad was able to fill the freezer with this button buck that he thought was a doe, but hey, it's meat in the freezer. All right, so we're picking up the uh, deer that Danny's dad shot. The place with processed it. It's called Engel Processing. I have to say that this Pingle Processing was one of the nicest processing joints I've ever experienced. They were so organized. They had so many different things that you could buy and they were just the nicest people. And on top of that, they take such good care of your game meat. I was truly impressed with them. Go check them out. Oh my last God. Time he did last night, he did 26 last Holy night. crap. Oh my god, look at this freaking thing. They don't grow like that in Florida. <laughs> no. Damn, that's a stud. So is this thing, holy shit. Oh my god. After nine days of hunting hard, trying to get a nice buck, and then seeing all the success that everybody else had been having, we were super frustrated and decided it was time to meet a random stranger at a gas station to do something totally new. We got a whole truck bed full of decoys. How far are we going? These cute little guys. Hey, you want to give a little shout out for your uh, your guide service? <laughs> uh, Nico Ackman Guide Service, I guess. All right, we're going to find out today if it's any good. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Oh, you're you're going like that, huh? Like, gro <laughs> like, the like the grocery shopping way. <laughs> I'm only making one trip. Yeah. <laughs> so we're hunting over some freshly cut corn. Like that. Apparently, these geeses like this stuff. Is that like, that's like what, that's just from that's just from them chewing on it? I'm guessing. Yeah, that's like leftover. You know, it might have been a little bit harvested, and the geese have been feeding on it. But where you see the the reason why they're still coming here is like this. <clears throat> yeah, right. So yeah, like you can see they've been. You, yeah, they've been chewing, chewing on it and stuff. Bit, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Well, I guess that's a good sign. Yeah. You don't you don't think we'll see geese until later on? Yeah, I don't think we'll see geese until probably like eight o'clock at least. Okay. Yeah, usually usually an hour after we go shooting, 
is Good shit right there. Should check out the secret map. Yeah, it looks promising. Yeah, we're getting real close. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, so pretty much we'll set up and use the corn stubble to brush in and we'll be since it's a south yeah. wind this sets up perfect for cover yeah. and then we'll probably put most of the decoys in that out, stuff. Out yeah. in that shit. Cool. So as far as ducks go, we're pretty much only you gonna maybe see some mallards? Yeah, you know, we might see some black ducks, we might see some pintails. We've even, okay. I've got a, Pintails high on my list too. We yeah. get them in Florida, but they're like the holy grail bird in Florida. I've got a couple buddies that have actually shot redheads out here. In, in, really? Not, not in this field specifically, but right in the area. Uh-huh. It's really weird to see redheads in a field, but uh, usually they just stay on water. That's and cool. Maybe the occasional wood dog or, uh, Cool, so it's possible to get a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah, it just all depends on what's kind of moving around, you know. It's yeah. not, they're not really common to shoot that other stuff, but we've shot them, so. Yeah. And especially this time of year, you never know what's going to drop in. So where's like the closest water that they might be roosting at? So there's probably like half a mile. There's a big pond over there. Um, and then there's a big wildlife area up this way and then a um, like a big reservoir too. And so they're, they're coming from the reservoir with the, the ice and everything that we've been getting. Cool. So, you know, that's probably perfect. That, that's probably like five miles away where that reservoir is, but Oh nice. We got some corn to snack on when we're bored. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, when we, so what I like to do is I like to, like, from my uh, actual setup, you know, we'll probably set up a little bit farther this way. I like to grab the corn from like just a little ways away, so I'm not, so I'm not um, clearing out the area. Yeah, by... clearing out the area and making it look unnatural for the geese. Because, like I said, the biggest thing with geese is like, you just gotta, you just gotta hide from them and look as natural as possible, right? When you, when you flip open the doors. Um, you gotta flip it hard. Yeah, but uh, flip it hard. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> My toes! You just take corn stubble and you want to make you, you basically want to make the blind disappear. So you just yeah. you, I right. like to start on the bottom as much as possible. And I put I put corn in every single loop where I mean you want to make it where you can't see basically any fabric at all because that's that's where the birds are gonna pick you out. Is if they can, even though it's camel fabric. Yeah, it's, it's not. Like, it's not camel to the yeah, fabric. Exactly. That we have yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you guys want to work on that. Cool. Oh, well, here you go, Mark. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Snacks. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So I'll grab my grab my other one off. Yeah, oh, you can you grab one. um in by the floorboards on the passenger side? There's a uh, there's a can of sweet tea. Oh, Could you grab that? Oh, yeah. One of the most southern things I've ever Yeah, I said a bar that like we don't have any tea. <laughs> it wasn't a bar. Oh yeah, it was a bar. <laughs> We're too far. You're too far north. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some, some guys will throw them out in the sprint. I like them. Here's a finished product. You can't even tell there's a blind there. Look at that. You all ready to kill some geese? Let's do it. Alright guys, so we're out here in Wisconsin. We uh, met up with this wonderful gentleman over here, Nico, who uh, offered to take us out for a little uh, field goose and uh, mallard hunt. And uh, shooting light just began. We just had a flock of like several hundred mallards come over top of us. And uh, we got all the decoys out here. So hopefully uh, we get some action. We shall see. Know what it is? Ugh. This fell again? Yeah. Pile some corn behind you. Make a pillow. You want my jacket? I'm not using it. Are you got space in there? Because this one's just caving in on me. Can you fucking throw this somewhere? I don't have a lot of space. No. Okay. Put it put it behind you. you can, Use it as a pillow. If you want to try to like <laughs> Those mallards are on the left too. 
I feel like those are mallards straight ahead. Together with some of those uh, cranes. Cut him. His ass, dude. Right. A headshot. Yeah, I, I killed this one, but somebody pulled that one right away. Yeah, I got the one. And then somebody shot. Oh, yeah, that was, that was a dumb bird. <laughs> dude, I ran at them. I ran at them, dude. That was sick, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. That was awesome. There you go. There's a little freaking sloppy sky donkey. I just, like, scared them dumb asses up. <laughs> Is it, yo, is this geese coming in right here? It is. Those wing beats are too fast to be cranes, right? better. That one. Oh shit. And then we start killing yours. <laughs> Alright, so uh, they've both got two geese down, I've got one. But mine's a quill lake goose, which is apparently special. So, you know, what you a, know what whatever. It don't matter. <laughs> And then, right as the geese started slowing down a little bit, this big old buck came out, started chasing a doe in the field that we were hunting in, just to rub it in our faces that we were terrible deer hunters. But hey, we did okay on the geese, so we weren't complaining. It's a really nice buck. Are you gonna do a video like that? Yeah. I'm currently on the road, heading to the taxidermist to pick up my goose, it's a special goose, 
and uh, I shot this uh, almost two years ago when we were in Wisconsin. I didn't realize it at the time, but after the hunt, I uh, realized that this goose is incredibly rare, um, and it's about a 1 in 10 trillion uh, genetic morph uh, that I had shot. So I took it to the tax service. I'm super excited to see what it looks like. I'm going to take you guys with me. Guys, there it is, a Clow Lake Goose on its way home. I'm so excited. Uh, the taxidermist that did this is uh, Marsh Hen Studios. I'm gonna put her information down, down right here. Uh, she does an incredible job.